The go. broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are. I'm glad to have you join us today for our webinar, Bulletproof Backups, generating new revenue, increasing your margins, and improving customer satisfaction. We're going to talk about how you do that, and we're going to talk a little bit about why you might want to do that. I'm pleased uh, that we can get together today. I hope uh, wherever you are, you're staying safe. I did an informal review of our attendees today. We have thousands of people signed up from nine different time zones. So perhaps it's good morning, perhaps it's good afternoon, or perhaps it's good evening. Uh, thank you again for being here. My name is Greg Newman, and uh, I am very pleased to be joined today by two experts in the field. Uh, Steve Firms joining us from Veeam, Global Alliances Solution Architect. Thank you. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? And I'm also joined today by our Senior Director of International Solutions Architects here at Zadara, Steve Costigan. Hi, Steve. Hi, everybody. Well, again, this is, uh, this is all about backup today, and I think we've got a terrific uh, presentation. I think you're going to learn a lot uh, about um, how to architect a backup solution that serves uh, companies with uh, the kind of needs we see today. Uh, we're all running far-flung and, uh, and operations that are what we might call hybrid in nature these days. Uh, backup uh, and backup routines need to keep pace, and we're going to take a look today at how that works. Uh, before we get to that, I want to do a few commercial messages. Uh, Steve Firms, talk a little bit about uh, Veeam, please, for those who may not know, although that's hard to believe these days. Sure. Um, for those who aren't aware, uh, Veeam is definitely the leader in backup solutions. Um, we focus on you know, cloud data management. It's hard to, hard to believe as well. Veeam was founded back in 2006, um, grown rapidly. I believe today we have uh, over 365,000 customers. 66 channel partners, offices in more than 30 countries. Um, last year, we hit a, a billion dollars in revenue. So, you know, keep on growing. And as you see, the most important thing, I guess, is also our uh, our NPS index, you know, showing that, you know, our customers truly do uh, like what we're doing and our, uh, our score is, is almost off the charts. It's true. We've, uh, of course, we share a number of customers, Steve, and, and uh, we hear the same types of reports from our customers. For those of you that may not know about Zadara, we are, in fact, a Veeam Technology Alliance partner. And uh, you can see that from the logos, uh, uh, Veeam Ready Repository, an object over on the side. And we thought we'd put up a, um, a few logos, uh, some, not all, of our uh, service provider partners worldwide, get a sense of uh, who Zadara is and where we are. We're in uh, hundreds of data centers worldwide with our storage solutions. And we'll talk a little bit later in this presentation about that. Uh, Steve Costigan, I'd like to have you kick things off for us. Let's talk about the value of data. I'm going to hand it over to you, sir. Sure. Thanks, Greg. So in, in terms of uh, the value of data, you know, we, we constantly look at um, the data that we create. And there's some analysis um, that Zadara has, has, has looked into um, with research um, provided by 451 Research in terms of the value of data from a customer's perspective. And what we're seeing here is that 75% of customers are seeing an increase in the value of their data. Now, that means that maybe there's, there's something around the, the value of data that means it's worth protecting. So, you lost me there, okay. If you're looking to protect that data, um, the key elements here is to really look at, sorry, Greg, I've, I've lost access to, ah, there we go. So if we, if we, sorry, Greg, this is, no. <laughs> okay. You gotta love technology. You've got the mouse, sir. It's, we'll keep it, keep it in your. Okay, it's going to work. Okay, so if, if we look at some of the, the protection of that data, then the key elements are, are keeping that data available to you. And if we look at the Gartner study, you know, back from 2014, they were estimating that $5,600 per minute of downtime for, for the average organization. The Pony Monitor Institute raised that in 2016 to $9,000 per minute. And when we look at what's happening in, in the world today, you know, we're seeing more and more ransomware attacks. We're seeing more and more you know, uh, reasons that businesses have to be able to get their data back quickly, especially because of these, these downtime issues. If we look at North data, uh, North Hydro, and really this was a ransomware attack from, from March 2019, 
that impacted 35,000 employees across 40 different countries. And the key element here was that they were able to gain access to Hydro's environment two to three weeks before the attack. So therefore, they were able to sit there and wait for a period of almost a month um, before actually instigating the attack. Now, the key elements here also was that a number of uh, antivirus vendors were unable to detect the impact of um, this Lokagaga, uh, Lokagaga um, environment. And the net impact of the downtime and the recovery meant that between 61 and $72 million worth is, is really what it has cost Norsk Hydro in, in real terms. In terms of looking at the, the impact of, of business and how you look to, to back up your environment, what you really need to be looking at is a case of you know, providing a true multi-tier, multi-location capability. And this is really what we're talking about today in terms of Beam and Zadara and being able to utilize not just your own capabilities, but those of a service provider. And this is really where, as we talk about some of the, the key components such as Cloud Connect, you're able to provide backup services that are integrated you know, into other cloud applications. You know, not a lot of people understand that you need to back up uh, Microsoft Office 365, for example, um, and how to do your know, backups of uh, NAS environments and protect against ransomware attacks. So if we look at um, really what organizations are being impacted with today, business really, really need to you know, back up their data, not just because they need to be able to offer a, a rapid recovery, but they may also need to do this for compliance reasons. And if, if we look at where a lot of those um, compliance reasons may be instigated, it could be around ransomware attacks. It could be around that data breach uh, capability that is being instigated in over 60% of organizations today. Of those that are you know, suffering from a, a ransomware attack or any catastrophic data loss, 94% of those companies don't exist. They don't survive. And for those organizations that are relying purely on tape to offer those, those backup and recovery capabilities, 50% are unable to do that according to Gartner. So what that means is that there's an opportunity in the market to be able to offer additional capabilities and additional services, especially for service providers and, and the channel out there. You know, we're seeing the growth from $5 billion in 2016 and an expected growth of $22 billion of, of market availability by 2023. That's a 24% or an over 24% compound ag aggregated growth in this market. So why Veeam and why Zadara? We believe that together we're the only complete multi-tier, multi-location, multi-tenant capability that is able to deliver this as a 100% OPEX solution. And Really, in combining Zadara and Veeam, this is a unique place in the market space. At this point, I'm going to hand over to, to Steve Fermis, and he's going to take you through some more of the in-depth in terms of what is Veeam and how it operates. Over to you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. All right. Looks like you've got control there. Seems, Good. It, 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 yep, it seems, it seems like we jumped ahead. There we go. Sorry about that. So first, um, let me explain. I want to go over one of the, the core tenets of uh, Veeam's you know, data protection methodology, and we call it the, the 3 2 one, one rule. Now this rule is based on the uh, the backup rule of three, which is commonly known as a uh, you know backup three two one rule. Now what's kind of neat is this uh, this rule actually came from a photographer Peter Crow who came up with this as a, a way to protect his digital photography. Um, and how it works is the the three two one rule states that you need to keep three copies of your data 
data stored on two different types of media, and one of them is being off-site. So how we do this? Well, one of the problems that we have, though, is we're getting the backup data off-site. Right? That can be a challenge, um, certainly because of limited bandwidth, um, exploding data sizes, and also a lack of resources are required in the investment you need to, to get all this data and to have an infrastructure off-site. This is solved by our Cloud Connect, Beam Cloud Connect. This allows us to meet the 321 rule without investing a lot of money and resources um, in this secondary site or, or adding you know, uh, expensive bandwidth to get the data um, off-site. And how this is done, it's done by leveraging the, um, the cloud backup repository services that our Veeam cloud and service providers offer to the customers. So we call them our VCSPs. Now, as I started in the slide, you know, it's the three, two, one, one rule. That extra one is um, something Veeam's added, which states that, you know, you should have one of these copies be off-site, uh, be offline, I mean. And prior to version 10, you know, that used to be tape, let's say. Um, but now in version 10, we introduced um, our immutability for object storage. Now, you know, I'll go into some details throughout the slides, but the key point I wanted to make was um, Zadara can satisfy all of these. So, you know, you can have multiple copies, you can have different media types, you know, being block file or object. You can certainly have it being offsite in one of our service provider locations. And as well as this offline, again, that would be the immutability. Now, how do we do this? This is all done by what we call our cloud data management platform. Now, our cloud data management platform, this allows our service providers to provide um, offerings like backup as a service or DR as a service to our customers. And on the block to our right, you'll see, you know, the, the key component is the backup and replication, right? This is the, the key feature functionality um, that Veeam has had for, you know, within the 15 some odd years. Um, but we've built upon that, you know, over time, right? We have the universal storage APIs, which is our snapshot integration. We have our orchestration level, which is the ability to automate processes within Veeam. And then we have our monitoring and analytics, right? So the, the backup replication certainly comes with some features, but if you really wanted some deep and rich uh, monitoring and analytics, that's where our Veeam One product comes into play. And lastly, you see the cloud SaaS, virtual and physical. So those are all the different platforms that we protect. So this is where you know, Veeam combined with Zadara provide our uh, solution providers a great way to provide all this uh, protection for our customer community. So one of the key components of our um, cloud data management platform is what we call a scale-out backup repository, or SOBER. Now, what is a scale-out backup repository? Well, within Veeam, you know, it is a backup target, it is a repository. And, you know, by its name, it's uh, designed to scale out to meet the needs of our customers. And how we do this is by adding what we call extents, right? So these are repositories that we add into this uh, scale out repository. Now, again, this can be direct attached, it can be NAS. Um, and a great thing is, again, uh, Zadara can satisfy um, all these different targets. So that's what we call our performance tier, right? That's where you, you back up the data to. Additionally, there's a, another component of the scale out back repository, which we call the capacity tier. And again, this is uh, the object storage target. Um, and this is where we can you know, copy or offload data from the performance tier into this um, capacity tier. And again, great thing is Zadara satisfies that as well. So you can have a complete end-to-end -end solution with Zadara and Veeam. So the performance tier, you know, as its name implies, you know, it, it needs to perform, it needs to be, you know, high speed. And what we do for this is um, we have a, a program in place called our Veeam Ready Repository Program. And it does, uh, you know, we have a lot of testing requirements and performance metrics that, uh, you know, vendors need to meet in order to attain this level of um, availability. And one of the things is that the VPSA has passed that. So when you're designing your scale-up backup repository, Zadara can be one of the um, extents in, in, the, uh, in the performance tier. So 
So as I mentioned, the secondary uh, component of the scale-up back repository is uh, the Veeam capacity tier. So this is backed by object storage. And again, the VPSA fits perfectly as a, as a target. Um, just as we did with the performance tier, we have a uh, program that validates the, uh, the targets for the capacity tier. And Zadara's VPSA has passed our Veeam Ready object storage um, program. So we have gone through and validated that it you know, meets all of our performance criteria. Um, when we introduced this capacity tier uh, in version 954 last January, we had what we call the move mode. And this was where, as service implies, we would move data from the performance tier to the object storage. And again, there was um, a particular time frame you had to set up, you know, whether it be seven days, 14 days, you know, pick a number. The data would get moved um, over to the object storage, and this would free up space on the on-prem um, Zadira VPSA. Now, I don't want to call it a problem, but one thing that this didn't do is it didn't satisfy, the move mode didn't satisfy the 321 rule because that second copy wasn't made until a delay, you know, again, that, you know, a couple of days or a week or how long you set it up. So it didn't, you know, satisfy our 321 rule right off the bat. So this February, we introduced version 10, which has a copy mode. In the copy mode, as it sounds, as soon as the backup data is created on the on-site VPSA, it is immediately copied over to the object storage uh, Zadar. And this does satisfy the 321 rule because there is no um, delay. It's, as soon as it's created on the uh, on-site, it's copied to the object storage. Now the move and copy modes can be used together. Um, and what this does, again, you know, it won't actually move the objects because they're already over there, but what it will do, it will prune off the old data off of the on-prem Zadara, so that will allow you to, to save some storage. So, as I mentioned, in, um, in version 10, we also introduced uh, what we call our immutable storage. So this takes advantage of the S3 object lock APIs, which Zadara has implemented. So what this does is, you know, as I mentioned previously, and you know, we have the 3211 rule, this now allows the Zadara VPSA to satisfy all across the, the 3211, right? So this allows us to copy the data to the object storage and locking it. So the, once the backup data is on the, um, the VPSA with the object lock, it cannot be deleted, it cannot be altered, nothing can happen to it until the um, expiration from the, backup policy has been achieved. So it's a, a wonderful way to lock and protect your data. And as part of this, we have yet another VeeamReady program called VeeamReady Object with immutability, and this is our VPSA has also passed that. So what does Cloud Connect all this does for us? Well, very easily, it allows theme and our service providers to provide a, a very easy mechanism for customers to send their backup data off-site to the service providers. Um, it goes through, you know, as far as the uh, end user experience, all you really need is the user ID and a password and the URL sent to you by the service provider, enter it into your cloud repository, point your backups to it, and off you go. Um, there's no special you know, VPN licensing. It's all part of uh, the Veeam's uh, secure SSL uh, capabilities. Um, the customers don't lose any feature functionality as far as the visibility, and you know, they don't just send it off to some you know, faraway place and, and, and lose contact with your data. You can see it all through the Veeam GUI. Um, you can do your restores and um, you know, pretty much everything you can do on site, you can do mostly off uh, with the Veeam Cloud Connect. And again, it's fully integrated. So again, you create the repository, points your backup copy jobs to it, and it's really done, right? And additionally, you can use our built-in WAN accelerators, which are free to speed up that data transfer and go off and do your, you know, your incremental backups and as if nothing changed. And lastly, this is a, a high-level you know, example of you know, what it would look like, right? So on the far left, you, know, you have your customer environment and your infrastructure. So again, as an end user, all I'm worried about is that you know, user ID, password, and the, the URL that the service provider provides me. The data goes off to that through that connected uh, to secure tunnel off to the service provider. 
from the customer perspective, again, it's just a, a repository. You don't see all of the you know, infrastructure and details that the service provider has behind the covers. Um, the, again, there's, there's no special licensing. Um, and on top of this, we have a, there you go, we have a Veeam Service Provider Console, which is a free um, feature. It basically, this gives the service providers um, a holistic view of their environment. So if the service provider had dozens and dozens, hundreds of uh, customers doing the multi-tenancy, they can see um, an overall view of their, um, their whole environment, right? How all the individual um, customers are doing, um, they can manage them from the centralized GUI, and they can also get alerts. So if there's anything goes wrong in any of the environments, it'll show up in this uh, interface. So very easy to use. Um, it allows you to do some billing reporting, you know, again, that remote management, and it has the, the multi-tenant built into it. And again, if you need, you know, deeper reporting, deep analytics, that's where you can take advantage of our Veeam One um, application to, to give you that. Well, thanks, Steve. This is, uh, I, I think everyone can see from your overview of Veeam software uh, and your description of uh, Zadara storage, uh, why, um, this, uh, why this combination can be very powerful for customers. Steve Costigan, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what, what people might want to ask their Veeam storage um, partners. Thanks, Greg. I mean, the, the, the key element uh, of Sadara is that, you know, we are Okay. It looks like we might well, have lost a mine. restore solution. And, and this is one of the key benefits that, that Veeam brings to, to this party in that you know, if you combine Zanara with, with Veeam in, in the right way, then it's not just about the backup, but it's more importantly about the, the restore capabilities as well. And you know, in terms of the, those backups and restores, and we're, we're going to go through some uh, case studies and, and some scenarios uh, later on in, in the slide deck. But from, from an important question perspective of really what we would ask um, service providers to, to do and, and even enterprise customers is you know, when you're looking to provide a solution in conjunction with Veeam, you know, is, is your storage, is your object storage, is it, is it validated for immutability with, with Veeam? Um, the key element on that anti-ransomware, and we're, we're going to cover more into that. Um, additionally, you know, is it truly multi-tenant? And what we mean by multi-tenant is can you actually take this down, down to the disk level? Uh, will you be able to deliver multi-tier capabilities, i.e. different levels of storage, with complete air gap between those environments, i.e. different controllers, different drives, but still maintain centralized control. Can you change that technology as things need? You know, we, we often see organizations run into, you know, questions about, well, what happens in six months time, 12 months time, 18 months time, when you introduce new technology, can I change? You know, can I adapt into that environment? Um, can you provide the same capability into multiple locations? You know, we we have a, a very, very different model in terms of you know, enabling the same product, uh, both on-premises and, and off-premises, and we'll, we'll cover in, into how that looks. Um, but, you know, as an MSP, you know, I, I've, I've been an MSP in, in my past lives, you know, and, and sometimes things change. You may lose a customer. You may need to change how that looks. Can you scale that back? Can you make it look completely different and this is a, a key element you know that you need to be able to ask you know your your storage partner and partner is is the key piece there you know because zadara provide, provides you know a partnership we pride ourselves on being a partner to you know, our msps and our, our channel and and even end user customers you know right the way through the stack and this is a really really key uh, important part of, of really who zadara is um, so, if we if we look at um, those locations, you know, Zadara provides a capability that we can deliver on-premises capability that delivers that same multi-tier capability of block, file, and object. 
we can deliver that into co-location partner uh, facilities. You know, a lot of service providers don't operate their own data centers. They operate in a, in a co-location facility. We fully support that. We'll show you how we can drive new ways of, of implementing um, storage and storage tiering um, in conjunction with, with those partners. And for those of you that you know are running your own data center um, and, and want to maintain control and all of the benefits of having that completely in-house, we fully support that as well. And we have a number of our partners who offer you know, Zadara services out and offer uh, Zadara services in conjunction with some of our public cloud uh, attached environments also. So in terms of what does that mean from a storage perspective as far as an MSP is concerned? Well, we believe that we are the only 100% you know, OPEX model that allows you truly to scale up, scale down, change your technology as you see fit based on what your business model is, not what Zadara's is. You know, and this is a key element of, of who we are as an organization. So you know, this offering of multiple tiers of storage, whether that's all flash with dedupe and compression or just compression or just, just dedupe, along with hybrid storage with SSD, cache acceleration, you know, or object storage with immutability. You know, these are all of the tiers that we offer in conjunction you know, that enables Veeam to take advantage of those and therefore service providers to take advantage of those. But the other key element, and akin to, to what Steve Fermis was talking about, is you know, centralized operations, centralized management and billing. You know, but we wrap this up with a 24 by 7 proactive monitor, monitoring and, and support facility that is, that is global. And really to underpin all of this that, that we're saying is we wrap this in a 100% uptime SLA. And, and this is again a key differentiator in terms of you know, that scale up, scale down and, and change capabilities that we bring to MSPs. In terms of how we do the multi-tenancy, again, you know, this, this patented technology that we've, we've brought to the market enables us to do things in a very, very different way to, to most of the storage vendors when they talk about multi-tenancy and they talk about separation. In our world, we talk about dedicated CPU cores, dedicated memory, dedicated networking, the drives, and all the way down to, to the actual disk level. So, if you're creating multiple virtual arrays, rest assured that they are completely isolated per VPSA and per tenant. So this means that you have the ability to you know, create that all flash array, maybe use that for a DR scenario, maybe utilize that hybrid with magnetic with SSD cache acceleration where that's appropriate. And, and where you then want to offer the additional tier of a scalable object storage capability, you're able to do this. And from within all of this infrastructure, you know, you can change where that storage resides. You know, if, if it's no longer need, needed in a tier two, then maybe you can reutilize that in a tier three capability and you're not penalized for that. So in terms of how we bring this to market in conjunction with Beam, you know, regardless of what your on-premises storage is, whether that's another array vendor or whether it's, you know, a hyper-converged environment like um, vSAN or, or Nutanix, then you know, combining the, the benefits of what Beam brings in terms of backing up those environments, combining that with the benefits of Zadara's you know, true multi-scale, multi-tenant capabilities means that you can provide a, a primary backup solution, then you can have a secondary um, backup copy on-premises that could be using a, a scale-out uh, backup repository, as, as Steve mentioned earlier on. But then you've, you, know, you, you still want to offer that 3211 capability. So you know, maybe that second backup copy, maybe that moves across to being a cloud connect provider, a service provider, and the service provider is taking advantage of providing that block and object capability in, in the scale out backup repository and combining that with immutability. Combining that with immutability means that you know, if, even if your primary backup is compromised or your, your accounts get compromised in, in some way and somehow that, you know, that bad actor enables you know, a deletion of your data, um, you can rest assured by having that in an object tier with immutability, you're still able to recover that. And, and this is a key component in this, this, you know, this fight against ransomware attacks that may sit dormant for, 
you know, weeks or months. And you know, we we looked into a little bit of that with the the hydro piece earlier on. You know, this is the way that ransomware is, is attacking organisations, and by having a, a good backup strategy, you can protect a, a large amount of your estate against that. So if we look at the service providers and what that means from a service provider perspective, then the service provider is able to offer multiple tiers and multiple capabilities because he may want a shared infrastructure utilizing Cloud Connect and all of the benefits that Veeam bring in terms of its multi-tenancy there onto a shared block and object um, capability where it's aggregating multiple customers, multiple tenants into a, into a common uh, repository but it may also have larger customers or regulated customers that they want to be able to dedicate and isolate not just block but block and object completely on a tenant by tenant basis and this is where Zadara becomes unique in this ability to have multiple object rings within the same infrastructure multiple block and, and NAS uh, capabilities within the same infrastructure but having that flexibility to change as the business requirements change. So if we look at some of the use cases, um, primary use case that you know we're seeing lots and lots um, in, in the you know in the in the press about and many organizations looking to offer a, a service around Office 365 backup. Why? Well, you know, there's over 200 million users now that have migrated from on-premises into an office. 365 environment, and that's growing by 21% per annum. But 76% of those don't have a backup strategy for their Office 365 data. And that means that you know, if they're in com compliance regulated industries and they need long term retention, or they need to be able to recover from accidental deletions, etc., then maybe my Microsoft's inbuilt protection capabilities are not going to be enough as, a, as an organization. So, if you take the Veeam, you know, VBO Office 365 backup, you can run that on premises and run that against the Zadara um, VPSA. You can run that against the Zadara VPSA running object storage. Um, you can also run this via a service provider and have the service provider take all of the pain away, you know, for, for managing backups, etc. After all, that's part of the reason why a lot of organisations run. Um, Microsoft Office in the first place. But we're going to dig deeper into this as, as a, a, a concept in our next live webinar. And here on, on May the 5th, we're going to talk about you know, Office 365 backup, you know, deeper into the technology on how, why, and, and, and the best way to, to protect that data. If we look at another use case, you know, the, the use case around ransomware, you know, we've talked a lot about this on, on this webinar, but Zadara's object locked lock and mutability enables you to you know, provide that separation and isolation from from a VCSP perspective you're able to say to a customer look you know we're, we're completely separate from your on-premises infrastructure um, therefore combining that with immutability enables them to offer additional services and additional value the fact that we've got this air gap capability from a block and an object um, capability means that longer term we're able to offer other features and, and functionality and again we're going to dive deeper into this on the 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 next one in our live webinar series on the 19th of may the final one in our webinar series is going to be around nas backup and we're going to dive into deeper in terms of looking at you know, why nas and backup of nas is, is such a problem area you know we're starting to see organizations wanting 100 terabyte plus NAS volumes, backing those up in traditional methods using NDMP and having periodic full, full backups is not a viable um, alternative you know, in, in terms of those, those sort of scales of, of NAS volumes. So combining what uh, Veeam have done with their change file tracking, combining that with Zadara and its scale up backup repository, and the ability to offsite and use Cloud Connect. Um, we're going to dig deeper into that in terms of our, our final webinar on June the 2nd. Thanks, Steve. Um, you know, it's uh, obvious that there are a number of ways in which Zadara and Veeam can work together to help solve business challenges that uh, people on this webinar 
our customers around the world uh, may be facing, uh, sometimes it's best just to, to give an example, right? And I know Viatel is a terrific example. Steve Koskin, you work closely with them. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what uh, what we were able to do with them and for them. Yeah, I mean, Viatel um, traditionally are, are a telco, they're one of the larger telcos in, in Ireland. You know, they provide full coverage across the, the, the island of Ireland. Um, and they, they originally came to, to, to Zadara trying to offer a, a storage as a service capability um, to complement some of their, their cloud offerings. Um, and then, you know, I, as, as time has moved on, they, they were looking to offer a, a, a backup as a service capability. And, and they, they chose Veeam um, for, for many reasons. You know, it's, it's the number one vendor in, in Europe, but also in the, in the strength of its capabilities from a a, a public um, capability from Cloud Connect, but also the fact that the, the BCSP licensing enables them to offer many different uh, capabilities. Um, so combining our block and our object storage um, with, with Veeam gives Viatel the ability to offer um, capabilities centrally from their, their Dublin location but also other facilities such as down in Cork and also to offer Zadara as an on-premises um, backup repository um, that can then be, be replicated onwards into uh, their Blanchardstown uh, repository uh, capability in, in Dublin. So you know, th they, they have a very unique place um, in, in terms of you know, the Zadara ecosystem um, that are a very, very strong partner, a very, very good partner of both organizations. The story you tell, it's interesting about Vitel, and I know we touched on it a few times in this uh, presentation, uh, but it's worth repeating, is that as much as the technology features as an important part of any solution, and of course it will always be important, uh, it's really the business model, and, and both Veeam and Zadara share this, which is that we give the kind of flexibility to our customers that they really can't find uh, elsewhere um, in terms of uh, um, the subscription model, in terms of being able to change technology uh, as needs change. Uh, that kind of flexibility is really one of the unique attributes, I think, of uh, what we're able to do for customers. And yeah, I think, I think, I think there's a, a key element there, Greg, in, in terms of Viatel, you know, and, and other um, MSPs, you know, they've been able to take that, that journey with Zadara across the, the last three, four, five years, where as we've developed new technology and added new drive capabilities, they've been able to take advantage of those changes on demand as we've released them. They don't have to wait three or five year cycles to be able to, to take advantage of that technology change. You know, if I look at when, when I joined Zadara six years ago, you know, we were on three terabyte drives and 100 gig SSDs and 600 gig SAS drives. You know, you look at the, the market now, you know, we're at 7.68 terabyte SSDs and 14 terabyte SAS, you know, near line SAS as, as the norm. You know, move forward five years. Where's that going to take us? You know, if you're if you're buying a technology today, you know, for it being best of breed today, in six months' time, it will have changed. And and Zadara is very key in that evolution for for MSPs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Steve Ferguson, I wanted to uh, make sure that um, uh, we, as we as we round out uh, this discussion and we begin to summarize what we've been talking about today. Uh, I wanted to make sure to hit upon um, the Veeam subscription licensing and, and uh, the features there um, because uh, I know Veeam has made a strong push in that direction as well. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, came up with, <clears throat> you know, I think it was towards the end of last year, our, our universal licensing. Mm -hmm. So it, it, very, it simplified the, the licensing model uh, for all, for end users as well as for the um, service providers. So it's a really different experience when you look at it from the perspective of a service provider or even an end user customer uh, in terms of uh, how to go about acquiring and managing the kind of technology you need for your backup, whether it's the software like Veeam or the hardware like uh, Zadara, um, really a totally different approach to traditional approaches. And uh, we hope we've been able to share with you a little bit about that in today's webinar. Uh, you can see on the screen right now some of the uh, key benefits, some of the reasons we think you ought to consider looking at uh, Zadara and Veeam together as a 100% OPEX solution for backup. 
If you'd like to learn a little bit more, we thought we'd give you some uh, resources here on this uh, slide. Please check them out. Uh, Steve Costigan did mention we're having some webinars coming up. We're very excited to be working with Veeam like this. And uh, these webinars will dive more deeply into the topics uh, you see here, uh, whether it's the backup of Microsoft and Office 365 environments, uh, which really is a very interesting one. Um, there are a number of uh, a number of aspects to it that uh, I didn't know about until I began to research it. Uh, ransomware is a perennial. Uh, we all know how important that is, and I think that there's some wonderful attributes to uh, the data immutability and the way in which we have the air gaps and other things. And if you're interested, I would strongly encourage you to check that one out. And then, like Steve Costigan said, NAS backup is actually um, a little trickier than than maybe people thought. Uh, so we thought these were worthwhile topics, and we hope you do too. And we hope you'll join us. Uh, if you'd like to learn on your own, please do uh, go to Veeam uh, and Zadara on each of our sites. You'll find resources. You can see some of them listed here. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be available afterward, of course. So if you don't um, want to write notes on this, uh, you can, in fact, uh, get this later. And we will have an email sent out to you, everybody that's listening today. Uh, so um, with that, I know we have done pretty well on time. We're about uh, 42 minutes into this presentation, uh, thought perhaps we would uh, take a few minutes to get some questions from uh, our audience. If you do have questions, for those of you that are familiar with the GoToWebinar interface, you can, in fact, write those questions in the, uh, in the interface in the questions panel, and we will see them there. Looks like we're already getting a few. We have a thank you uh, from one participant. Okay, you're welcome. Glad, <laughs> glad we could do this. Um, and uh, um, I, we do have a question here about snapshot integration uh, using Veeam APIs. Uh, okay, that's a, an interesting one. Why don't we jump into that? I want to talk about Veeam snapshot integration with uh, Zadara uh, and where we stand on that. Steve Costigan, any? Yeah, so I mean, um, in terms of the, the snapshot integration, I think that's um, a, a working development between uh, Veeam and Zadara moving forward in terms of uh, our tier one capabilities. Um, we, are, we have a fully RESTful API. Um, so today we, you know, we, we would rely on, on scripts for, for automation of you know, things like, like NAS backups, et, et cetera. Um, but we can use our, our VSS provider as well to, to present that to, um, to, to Veeam repositories, et cetera. So there's many different ways of doing it. The automation of that you know, is, is something that jointly we're, we're working on together. You know, it's a good, your answer reminds me of something important, and that is that um, enterprise storage is complex by nature. There's no getting away from that fact. And I think that um, uh, all of us who are in this business of, of enterprise storage and management uh, know that, uh, but it's worth remembering and reminding ourselves from time to time. And the integration between Veeam and, and Zadara uh, and how um, we have simplified a number of aspects of uh, the management uh, is really a credit to both organizations. It's a lot of hard work um, putting these kinds of, of integrated solutions together. Uh, I have a question here. Uh, about uh, our 100% OpEx model. Do, you know, I'm going to summarize, but basically the question is, you know, I've seen these types of offers before from some legacy providers. Uh, how is yours different? Um, well, I can tell you uh, it is truly 100% to OpEx. It's truly pay-as-you-go, no long-term contracts, no minimums. Um, and to contrast that with uh, what we've seen out there in the market from some other providers, storage providers, um, you know, our, our system is built from the ground up, uh, as Steve Costigan was talking about earlier, it's built from the ground up to be uh, an integrated system with, uh, with block, file, and object uh, in one system. Uh, and so when you take delivery of hardware um, and, uh, and you need to grow in, in future, uh, you don't need to swap that hardware out. You don't need to do anything uh, to, um, to change that. And therefore, we don't need to, to modify the underlying contract. Uh, if you have a contract with us, chances are it's because you'd like to get some discounts over a, a longer period, and we do certainly offer those. Uh, but we also uh, give you the flexibility to, to work with us on a, a totally a pay-as-you-go um, um, manner, if that's how you choose to do it. And I would encourage Greg, you. I think the important thing there is it's pay-as-you-go, not pay-as-you-grow. You know, we don't ratchet up. Um, we, we still allow people to 
to reduce their, their costs. You know, and that's very different to every, every other provider's model. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's exactly right. We see it, don't we? Uh, two examples of that. We see that uh, people, actually, I can think of three examples. Uh, we have a hibernation option, which is pretty cool. You can you can hibernate storage on the weekends or at times when you need to. And there's more more to be talked about there, but it's a really interesting option. And then and then of course, uh, like Steve, like you say, um, should your needs change and and uh, they go down, um, you, your uh, usage goes down. Therefore, your bill goes down. It's that simple. Uh, uh, furthermore, and we see this from time to time as we upgrade our technology. It does happen that new technology. We saw this with uh, the introduction of our NVMe stuff last year. Um, uh, that may be a lower cost per gigabyte than, say, previous technology. And in that case, you may see your costs go down. Certainly, your cost per gigabyte go down. Uh, storage usage always tends to go up. We know that. But uh, but it's nice that we can pass along these kinds of savings over time uh, as we upgrade and migrate our technology, and we allow our customers to do that on demand. All right. So. Um, uh, I'm going to sift through a few more questions. It's great to uh, uh, to see these. Um, there's a question about how does multi-tenant environment of Cloud Connect work? Uh, looks like the question is about uh, Veeam One being a single tenant solution. Uh, Steve Fermis, you want to talk a little bit about uh, multi-tenant environments in Cloud Connect? Sure thing. So the way it works is that um, once you turn on the Veeam Cloud Connect, the service provider will have the ability to create um, tenants. And again, each of these tenants uh, can represent a, uh, an individual company. And those you know, tenants will have, um, you can have broken down you know, multiple profiles within it. But that's how um, it will get sent down to them um, as far as connecting to Cloud Connect. Now, as far as Veeam One, from the uh, perspective of the service provider, it is, um, it is it's one customer, so it's one whole view of their environment. And the same thing for the uh, end user, you know, all they see is their information. Oh, very good. Okay, good. Well, I hope that answers our users, uh, our visitors' question. Um, and uh, and I know for everybody out there, um, both Veeam and Zadara, we have a tremendous amount of information available online. Uh, it's a big decision. Anytime you're going to be thinking about something like this, you're going to want to be thorough. Uh, we recommend you do your research, and uh, we welcome your questions, Veeam and Zadara. Um, I see here a question about uh, 3211. Does Zadara offer tape library backup as a service? Well, let's talk about tape for a minute. Uh, uh, Steve Costigan, I know that um, you mentioned tape earlier uh, in your presentation. Uh, there, you know, tape has been with us a long time. Um, we've all you know, use tape for decades. Uh, but uh, that's not necessarily the preferred method today. Why don't you talk a little bit about um, what we like to recommend to clients? I, I think we're living in very interesting times right now. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about COVID-19 because we've seen a number of organizations who are locked out of their data centers. They can't change their tapes. They can't rotate them. What do you do when your backup strategy requires tape and physical people to turn up in bands and collect the tapes and take them somewhere else. Um, that's a challenge for a lot, lot of businesses right now. And we're, we're seeing a lot of organizations say, okay, it, this is a change. Now I need to change my backup strategy. Object fulfills that, that need in terms of things are online, but also the immutability means that they're effectively offline as well in, in the same way a tape would be um, in, in terms of protecting that data. So. That's, that's what we're seeing happening right now. That doesn't mean that tape's dead. Um, we've been predicting tape is dead for forevermore. All we're saying is there's a different way of doing it. And sometimes things like you know we're experiencing right now enforce those changes. And, and I think many people will, will be looking at this and go, can I actually get a service provider who, who can handle that, that piece? And, and that's where I think things are very, very um, unique for the cloud connect service providers moving forward yeah that's a good point right it's a it's an excellent uh, uh use case and a good reason why the cloud connect uh, network can be so valuable um a couple more questions we have a little bit more time so let's get through a couple more and if we don't get to your question today please know that uh, we will do our best to answer them and and send those answers out to the audience if we've missed any important questions 
that we think we uh, we'd like you to know about. Um, here's a couple more. Uh, let me start with an easy one, and and uh, and then I'd like to get um, your opinion on a on a slightly more difficult one. It says here uh, the easy one is can I access my Zadara virtual private storage array from anywhere over the internet? And the answer is yes. Uh, how's that? Um, obviously, there's a little more to it, but basically, uh, we were built as a um, a multi-tenant uh, web-based um, and web access uh, storage system. So yes. Um, Let me take that one, Greg, because um, I think it depends on, on the access protocol. You know, if, it, if it's objects, then then yes. You know, object is a, you know, it's a HTTPS. It's, it's built with latency in, in mind. Mm -hmm. um, if you're thinking about block and ISCSI across the internet, nah, yeah, that's, that's not the way to go. Same with NAS, you know, they, they weren't built with, internet protocols in, in mind. You know, NAS is a low latency environment, so is iSCSI. So you want your latency to be as, as close to your compute for those environments as, as possible. Object handles things in it in a different way. So as, yep. as always, I will always say it depends. And we, and we have a guy internally who's, who's very great at saying it, it depends. Um, and, it, and it really, really does. This is a good point, thank you. So So while you can do it, as Steve says, it may not be the best uh, idea to do it, and uh, and performance matters. Uh, our web-based interface, uh, so that you can see what uh, VPSAs you have running, is is always available. But uh, you need to you need to understand your your storage performance characteristics and what you're looking for uh, when you're setting up your storage. Um, the other question, and this is uh, this is something uh, that I think a lot of people may have on their minds: um, object storage lifecycle management. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about lifecycle management. Uh, Steve Costigan, you want to jump uh, jump on that first? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, we, we support a policy base where you can set an expiration on a policy for, for that bucket. You know, if it's 90 days time, five years, seven years, 10 years, you know, 10 years and one day and it, it's gone, you know, if that's what the policy dictates. Conversely, you know, you may have a protection policy. That protection policy is, is really where immutability comes in, that, that compliance um, perspective that says, you cannot delete this until seven years and, and one day. So we, we operate and provide both both models. Again, depending on, on which way you want to operate. Excellent. Uh, NDMP backup for NAS shares. Is it supported? Actually, I, I think we have some uh, information on this, Steve Costigan. I, I, I think this is probably the, the, the best one to go to, to Steve Fermi's, really, because NDMP, I, I think, is, is, is dying. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it, as I mentioned earlier on, you know, if, if you've got a, a, a small NDMP or a small NAS backup and you can run NDMP, then, then great, it works. It's been around for, for, for forever. The problem with NDMP is that you still need to do periodic full backups. And if that's a hundred terabyte volume, and let's say it's going to take, let's 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 take it to the to the opposite end of the scale. And let's say your tape runs at 125 megabytes per second. How many days is it going to take you to do your backup? You're probably not going to complete it in a week. That's that's where you've got to start to look at different ways of doing things, and and that's really what Veeam have brought to the table here with their change file tracking. Steve, do you want do you want to add into that? Sure, Steve, you did a great job as well. Um, you know, so certainly prior to version ten, you know Veeam, you know could preferred or only had the access the ability to back up uh, NAS through NDMP. Um, <clears throat> as Steve alluded to, um, you know certainly not the greatest way to protect the data. So um, in version 10, we came out with our NAS file backup, which, um, you know, it's, it's completely different than NDMP. Um, it's, it's kind of revolutionary. So, you know, it goes through, you know, backup all the data. You can do individual file restores. You know, all the stuff you can do, um, you know, within Veeam, you can now do with uh, NAS backups. Where, like you said, with, you know, NDMP, it was strictly going to tape. Um, you know, you didn't have file level granularity. You know, it was all or nothing, as you said. Um, take a long time to do restores, uh, stage it, and then pull out the individual files you needed. All that's gone with the new NAS file backup, which on June 2nd, there's a webinar to go over that. Cool. Exactly. That'll be fun. Uh, we have time for one more question, and uh, it's a perfect one to end on, I believe. It says, 
can Veeam and Zadara be integrated to offer backup as a service to customers? Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what we're talking about today. I'm so glad you asked that question. Thank you. Um, uh, let's talk just for a minute, um, uh, you know, quickly about how that uh, uh, backup as a service might look from a service provider's uh, point of view. Um, Steve Costing, I'll start with you real quick. Uh, if a service provider is thinking about backup as a service with Veeam and Zadara, what do you think? Where do they? I, do they I, I think it's it's a perfect combination because of well, obviously our, our multi tiering capabilities, because of Veeam's tiering capabilities. Um, but also a, a really, really critical fact is both of us have got fully RESTful APIs. You know, we publish our APIs. We have libraries to to help people. If you if you want to, you know, create your own portal um, and integrate that into Zadara's um, RESTful APIs and and Dreams, then it, you know, it doesn't need rocket science to to be able to do that. Um, and I think that's that's a great way of you know, somebody adding value in terms of an MSP and offering that as a, a service. Um, you, know, the, you can do things manually, but we live in an automation world and having APIs is, is critical in, in delivering that. Excellent. Excellent. That's exactly right. Um, Steve Fermi, I want to give you the last word. I really appreciate your, your participation today and, uh, and I want to thank you. Um, with respect to uh, Veeam and uh, backup uh, with Zadara, um, any advice for service providers that you might offer? Well, I think the one of the, the key values for the Veeam and Zadara solution is, as I mentioned, you know, Zadara satisfies end to end the you know Veeam data protection model, right? So you, all factors of the the three two one one. Um, it can all be done by, you know, one vendor, one platform, one solution. So it, it makes the, um, you know, the, the end solution to the service provider, you know, very simple as far as, you know, not a lot of, you know, hands in the, in the, in the recipe, so to speak. So it's, uh, it's very simplified and, and very easy end to end. Thanks. Uh, that's why I like about it. Thank you. I agree. And uh, I hope that this uh, webinar has been helpful and enjoyable for everybody who's joined us today from around the world. Thank you again for being here with us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at future webinars like the ones we've talked about and they're on the screen right now. Uh, please do sign up if, uh, if any of those topics sound interesting to you. Uh, Steve and Steve, uh, thank you again very much both of you for your expert participation today and helping us talk about this important topic and uh, look forward to seeing everybody on uh, future webinars. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Steve. Hey, thanks, Rick. Thanks, Steve. Bye-bye.